Join us here at Last Adam Tabernacle as we bring Christ to the nation. Glory to God. Uh, thank you, Jean. Thank you, worship team. Uh, yeah, give them a big hand clap. Eh? They did a great job. Hallelujah. Uh, where I stay, I'm next to a church, an Anglican church. So as you walk to the, like as you come out of the door and walk to the uh, parking lot, you can see people in the church, some people, faces. So today, as I walked out of my house, then I looked in the church, you know, I saw someone in the worship place. <laughs> Glory be to God. Hallelujah. Amen. <laughs> yeah. But that wasn't, uh, they were not doing anything bad. You, you understand? Glory be to God. They were visiting or something like that. Amen. <laughs> Hallelujah. Amen. And then, so, glory be to God. I'm sure they are laughing. You know, eh? Glory to God. Hallelujah. Yes. God is good. Eh? God is what? God is very good. Hallelujah. God is very, very good. Hallelujah. Amen? He's what? He's good. Eh? Amen. Yeah, today we're going to uh, talk um, again, eh? basically the same stuff we shared uh, last Sunday, okay? Uh, about uh, praying for our country, hmm? that our country will walk eh? in its destiny, eh? okay, in the, in what it is called to do, eh? all right, because there are blessings for that. Eh? Uh, on the other hand, there are also consequences of not doing that. Eh? You remember, we talked about that, eh? okay. So it looks like. God is not in a hurry to talk about other things. Amen? He's again going to what? Yeah, he wants us to talk about that again. Hallelujah. Uh, a few weeks ago, we were talking about um, a coming famine and how God is saying that, that you shall prosper in it. All right? And telling us to, to give and to save. Okay? And uh, most of you know we say exactly that for three weeks. Okay? God is, not, is, is never in a hurry to what? To, to unleash the privilege, you understand? But Pastor Moses, that one you said in that Sunday, I told you now you something deep. Glory be to God. Amen? But it is, it's, you see, God uh, knows his children. Eh? God knows his people. Hmm? You are his, you're God's people, eh? Your God's children. Eh? So God knows what his children need at any one time. Eh? The moment you, you start wanting to what? Like a preacher, eh? you're always trying to look for deep things to tell people, to impress. So, so you see, what has happened? You have become just an impression uh, provider. Eh? Is that so? Does that make sense? Eh? You know like service providers, weddings and parties, eh? Okay, who well, they provide place. Now you become a preacher where you just what? Providing impression. You know, eh? And then now, again, this, these are the things, eh? This statement, man, I'll never for, and I try to live by it, eh? Which I learned from Rick Joyner, that cannot people always respond to can authority, eh? eh? So someone gets some deep things which God hasn't told them to say. But because they want to impress, they are always, you know, eh? and they impress, eh? they cannot. You understand? Eh? And they cannot start saying, man, that's man, that great man of God. Yet God is like, those are your things. I didn't tell you to say them. Hallelujah. Okay? Acts chapter 17. Acts 17. Verse 26. Eh? Talking about nations, eh? Uganda. It says, and he has made from one blood every nation... Of men, so God has made nations, eh? and He has made them to dwell on all the face of the earth, and has determined 
the appointed times. Okay? The appointed times, you can, uh, you can say it means the appointed times when those nations would form, eh? or the times when you'd be born in those what? Nations, and you become part of that what? Nation, eh? okay? And he has also determined the boundaries of their dwellings. All right? So here we just want to emphasize the fact that nations are of God. Eh? You understand? Eh? Nations are of God, and he didn't create these nations just to be there. Okay? Every nation has a purpose. Okay? Every nation has something they're supposed to fulfill in the earth. All right? We saw the example of, of Israel. God gets Abraham, and he tells him that I'll make you a great nation, okay? And I'll make you a blessing. Okay? You see, eh? I'll make you a blessing, and you shall be a blessing. So Israel was supposed to be a blessing eh? to the nations. Eh? All right? And the Bible says in uh, Isaiah 43, eh? Isaiah 43 from verse, 10 to, from verse 10, it says, this is a call of Israel. Eh? It says that you are my witnesses, says the Lord, and my servant whom I have chosen. Hmm? You're my what? Witnesses, says the Lord, and my servant whom I have chosen, that you may know and believe me. Okay? So, these guys, their call is to be witnesses. Okay? And they're supposed to know God, eh? okay, and believe him and understand that he is here. Okay? To also know that before him, there was no other God. Eh? Nor shall there be any after him. Then he says in verse 11, I, even I, am the Lord, and besides me, there is no Savior. I have declared and saved. I have proclaimed, and there was no foreign God among you. Therefore, you are my what? With so, Israel was supposed to be a witness. Eh? They were supposed to get to know this God, this one God, get to know him, get to know that he's not an impersonal God, eh? okay? And they were supposed to be now a witness to the nation that also the nations will know man, this God, eh? we also want him, okay? Now, when they failed in that assignment, trouble came. As long as they were doing this, okay, Israel was blessed. When they went off course, eh, trouble came. Hmm? You all know eh, in the Bible the history of Israel. Eh? It was primarily getting away from their calling. Hallelujah. And that thing also happens in what? Individual lives. Eh? But that is not the subject for today. Hallelujah. Okay? So, we talked about, um, we gave an example. Now, God said in uh, Exodus 4, eh, he said that Israel is my firstborn. Israel as a nation. Eh, God said that Israel is my what? Firstborn. Eh? And here we see the firstborn nation has a calling. It means all the other siblings eh, also have what? Callings, eh? you understand, just like the firstborn, eh? okay. And uh, so last week we we gave an example, uh, America, eh? you see, the United States of America, and uh, I shared a vision which Apostle John Molinde had in 1986. Okay, he had gone to minister in the states. He was in the city of of in the in Oklahoma, Tulsa, Oklahoma. Yeah, the city of Oklahoma, the state of Tulsa. Okay. And so he was there, and then he was, you know, he was trying to pray, but it was tough, the atmosphere. Eh? He couldn't, like, break through. Eh? Okay, so he asked God, what's up? Eh? Okay, so he continued to pray, you know, then as he's, you know, asking God, why is it so hard, you know? Then he had a vision. Eh? In this vision, he saw um, um, a China clay pillar. Okay? And, you know, all around it, there were flowers, you know, eh? Okay? And on top of it, there was a cake. Eh? Okay? There was a beautiful cake, a plate with a cake on it. All right? 
So it was beautiful, like the pillar, you know, with flowers and the cake, you know. Eh? So as he looked at it, then it began to like move, eh? like to go away from him. Eh? Okay. Then when it reached somewhere, the, this pillar turned into a mountain. All right, a mountain, and the cake, okay, became a city. You know, eh? a city with a beautiful, great light. Eh? You see, eh? the thing which we are like, you know, um, a city on top of a hill, you know, bright, eh? you know, eh? okay. Then, after he sees that man, a huge city with a great light, you know, eh? on a mountain, okay, then as he looked at that, it began to come back to him, eh? the mountain began, you know? So, when he gets here now, it is again the pillar. But now the pillar is cracked, cracks. Okay, the cake has turned into like crumbs. Eh? Okay, so he's shocked, man. Eh? So as he continues, he's now shocked. Eh? This beautiful thing now has, you know. So as he's doing that, then, then all of a sudden, actually, what I didn't say uh, last Sunday, which I didn't know, but I got to know it in the week, because in the week I endeavor to be a good shepherd. Eh? I research all my things. Hallelujah. So I just don't come tell you Lugambo, what, you know. It's too, amen. So anyway, he said that actually as he looked, the thing actually crumbled. You understand? Eh? Even he was, you know, eh? he, he, be, he was in shock. He began to cry and pray. Okay? And then as he's doing that, he had a voice. Eh? He had a voice. He's still in the vision, eh? you know, like your things. Eh? Okay? Paul, eh? Brother, you guys, if, you, if there's a, someone who's called a seer, it is this guy, man. Hallelujah. This guy eh, is very thorough. Eh? Paul used to say, Paul uh, Jesus, eh? uh, a prophet, you know, used to say that this guy <laughs> combines Pastor Moses' seeing, Jesus' seeing, uh, John, eh? Apostles John C. He combines all of it. Eh? You know, the whole thing is combined in one person. Okay? Of course, mine was zero. Eh? <laughs> Amen. But zero also can be added to something, isn't it? Okay? Two plus zero is what? It's 20. <laughs> Amen? And so, as he's seeing that, um, yeah, he had a voice, eh? which, of course, was the voice of God saying, I am looking for a man who will stand in the gap for the land, but I found none. In fact, the voice will say that, you know, the foundations of America have been destroyed. Hallelujah. Hmm? And he explained that the, that whole thing was America, you know, you see, America was supposed to be like a city on top of a hill eh, to give light eh, to the nations, eh? the light of the word. You see, that's why at one time, eh, before you guys were born, or even shortly, any anyway, America man, eh, it was a great missionary what? <laughs> nation. And so now the foundations have been destroyed. Now, you know, eh? and then, so, you know, it's the foundation, you know, America is supposed to be a city, you know, a light to the nation, and now they have done to other things. All right? Uh, so God says, I'm looking for a man, but I found none. You know, eh? Then John Mulinde tells the Lord, but. And so he says that I want someone to pray. Okay? He said, but, I mean, this nation, there's so many uh, movements, uh, prayer movements, people who pray. You know, eh? As in they're there, you know, if they even go to the nation and teach about prayer. And God say, you know, the cry of sin, eh? eh? From this country, Okay? is greater than the cry of prayer. You know, eh? It's greater. That's why God is still looking for someone to pray. Now, as you think about America, you know what I'm saying. Now, God, for now, wants to what? This America and Israel thing, they're just examples. They're just examples, eh? Which we're supposed to study and look through so that we now pray for our country. Okay, there's a possibility that our country, you know, we are at crossroads, eh? 
You know, where God is um, anticipating that something come unless, eh, like, we change course. Eh? You know, eh? looks like, this, uh, you know, I'm curious why they think I'm sharing these things. Eh? Okay? Because it's like God, and now he can only count on us, his church. His church. He can't count on what? On uh, your grandfather, who is a Muslim, you understand? Eh? God is counting on what? God is counting on us. <laughs> Hallelujah. He's counting on us, his church. You're listening to me? Eh? Amen? On Thursday, we prayed eh, for the nation. Eh? Okay? We prayed and we're, and we're going to continue to pray. Amen? Hallelujah. We, to stand in the gap, you know, yeah? So that Uganda can walk in the purposes of God. Eh? And when a nation does that, they're blessing. When a nation doesn't do that, eh? you know, eh? No, he told, uh, uh, God told in this, uh, in this experience later, God told Apostle John Humalinde, okay, that now three judgments are going to be sent against, you know, the United States. He told him the first one will be, he's going to, to judge the God of mammon. Hmm? Basically money, finances, economy. Okay? That would be the, the first one. And of course, when it, it then said, and it will not only affect America, but it will affect Oh, the other what? This is 86, all right? Before Charlotte was born. Eh? Amen? Hmm? Charlotte, man, today she reached here in record time. Eh? Usually she comes in at a quarter to what? A quarter past midday. <laughs> Amen? But today she, she came in a quarter before 10.30, something like that. Eh? Okay? <laughs> I was going to give you some advice as a good shepherd <laughs> but let me leave you <laughs> so yeah three judgments eh? okay yeah number one that this is number two I'm going to God say I'm going to judge judgment against the pride of man eh? you know eh? about what people have done you understand they take pride in, in what they have done eh? And he said that when that comes, he said entire cities eh, will be destroyed by natural calamities. Those things, eh, what? Do you remember Hurricane uh, Katrina, how it destroyed you know, entire, you know, eh? I believe you are those kind of things. Go say that's why, you know. Okay? Then he said the third one. Okay? Since Bagaran, your rights, our liberty, you know, eh? Then he said, now I'm going to judge that. Eh? Those things which have what? have lowered and done away with my what? With standards. Eh? He said, I'm going to remove my hand, eh? and then they will see what those right things, eh? how far they can go. You understand? And then when that happens, they will cry out to me. I believe one of the, th the key things in that eh, is that thing of the, what? the gay rights and what? Eh? Get married. You understand? Well, I will remove my hand. Then she, you know, eh? Why? Because my standards, you know, they have erased my standards. Eh? Uh, judge, you understand? Eh? But uh, again, remember where eh? this thing is, oh, uh, where it's coming from. Eh? Foundations being destroyed. Eh? A, city, a culture is supposed to be a great light. Now it's no longer. It's not doing its work. Eh? And those things, what happen? Okay, so God wants us to pray for our nation and take it very seriously. Amen. You know, when things are well with the nation, they're also well with you. You know that, eh? Okay? Jeremiah chapter 29, verse 7. These are Jews in captivity, eh? And God says, Seek the peace of the city where I have caused you to be carried away, captive. Okay? Of course, you're not a captive in Uganda, eh? All right? You're not a what? This is an opportunity to say uh, what something, but some people might, might misunderstand me. You're not a captive in what? <laughs> yeah, and, and it says, and pray to the Lord eh, for it, eh, for where you are. Eh, for in its peace, you will have what? You'll have peace. You know, when all is well with Uganda, hmm, then all is well with you. And God is saying, pray for where you are. 
Are you listening to me? Hmm? Pray. Don't just say yes and, and after a year, you're not going to pray. Say yes when you mean it, that you're going to pray. Hallelujah. Amen. Like I told you, I, I what? I am, uh, I didn't, when I became a pastor, I wasn't looking to be impressed by people, you know. Okay? First Timothy chapter 1, First Timothy chapter 2, verse 1 and 2, it says, Therefore, I exhort first of all that supplications, prayers, intercessions, and giving of thanks be made for all men. All right? For kings and all who are in authority, that we may lead a quiet and peaceable life in all godliness and what? Reverence. Okay? Prayer for the leaders. Eh? All right? Prayer for who? The leaders. Eh? If you pray for them, eh? you understand? Eh? Okay? Then, you know, if they somehow allow to be influenced by your prayers, then they won't cause trouble. Eh? They won't cause what? Trouble. And you will live a peaceable life. You know what? Okay? So, one of the ways you can pray for your country is, number one, pray for the country to walk in its calling. Number two, pray just for the general peace of the nation. Eh? Okay? Number three, pray for the leaders. Hallelujah. Pray for seven, yeah? Hallelujah. Okay? If you don't want him, at least pray that as he's still around, eh, he doesn't cause trouble. You understand? Eh? Eh, pray that man, he may do godly things while he's still around. Eh? Well, while he's still, you're there, you're like this guy. Eh? But, but now that he's still around, eh, pray for him, eh? Okay, that while he's still around, he doesn't mess you up. You understand? Eh? Eh, okay. Hmm? I had a dream on a, a, was it Saturday morning? Anyway, whatever. Eh, when I was somewhere and there was a political leader who I won't tell you, you know, eh? who was like, there was something that was going to happen, like elections. And this guy said, if, you know, he said, get ready to vote, eh? prepare to vote. However, also, get ready, prepare eh? for force. Eh? Like for me to use force, eh? should this thing, eh? if it doesn't go my way, my way. He said, yeah, move, get ready, move what thing. However, also, prepare eh? for force. Amen? In fact, as he's saying that, you know, I was listening to it on, uh, like, there was a radio, you know, eh? and she's on what? Loudspeaker. And meanwhile, there's trouble, and we're fleeing. So as you're fleeing, you hear this guy saying it on radio. You know, eh? I haven't told you the first bit of the dream, because you might identify who it was. Hallelujah. But this happened, anyway, you know, pray, you know, eh? pray for what? All those in authority. Glory be to God. Amen? Do what? Uh, please pray, amen? God is counting on you, eh? God is doing what? He's counting on you. Matthew chapter 6, verse 9 to 10. Eh? You can pray like this. Eh? You can pray saying, Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Eh? Your kingdom come. Last year we did a bit about the kingdom of God, eh? the kingdom the, which is coming in the millennium. Eh? Where to be wonderful, eh? to be where, where Jesus is the king on earth. Right now he's there just in our hearts, then the vision. Eh? Okay. <laughs> but in those days, eh, he will be live, live Jesus. People can't envision that reigning with the capital city, Jerusalem. Okay, and some of you, the good shepherds are going to reign with him. The good shepherd, you see, for me, I think about the millennium all the time. I want to be a great man. You know, that's why I never to be a good shepherd because I just don't want to be some kind of body in the kingdom. If this church, how many people has failed you? If you haven't been a good shepherd, how do you expect to be what? To reign with the Lord. Hmm? To sit on the throne, eh? 
with him. Eh? Eh? And those thrones in the Bible and in the final quest, those thrones are part of his throne. You know, eh? Okay? Yeah. I don't know what I was talking about. Hmm? Your kingdom come. Eh? You understand? We can get a taste of that eh? before the millennium comes. Yeah? Your kingdom. Eh? Okay? So in this sense, you want Jesus to be involved. Eh? He's like to be the, the president, the king of Uganda. Eh? Where is our Lord? Where Uganda is doing what the Lord, what the king would want to be done. You understand? Eh? Let your kingdom come, Father. Eh? Let your kingdom reign in our nation. Eh? Let your kingdom reign in Uganda. Okay? So in that sense, you're basically praying for him to be king over this country. Okay? And where is king, all is well. You know? Prosperity. You remember the kingdom that is coming? Okay? Man, we study that there will be prosperity. You know? Eh? People will be living 900 years. So when Jesus is reigning in a nation, eh? people's lifespans, people's problems, and the things are great. Eh? Not perfect, you know, eh? but not as worse as they can be without him. Do you understand? Eh? So pray, eh? you know, that Father, let your kingdom come. Let your will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Pray for the will of God to be done in our country. Hallelujah. Yeah, you know, for all this time you have told God your needs, eh? he has heard, eh? and what? He's working on them. Eh? Now he wants you to have, you know, a greater, you understand? Eh? You know, bring now for the nation. Eh? Eh, the nation. Eh? Seriously. Eh? Hallelujah. Okay? Are you going to pray? Psalm 33, verse 12 says, it says that blessed is the nation whose God is the Lord. Hallelujah. Blessed is the nation eh? whose God is the Lord. You know, eh? that's what happens when you pray, let your kingdom come. Eh? Okay? Okay? The God eh, becomes the Lord of that one. Or that whole nation. And it says, blessed is that nation. All right? So Uganda, you know, with your prayers, we're going to be blessed. Okay? Okay? Because you know God answers prayer, doesn't he? And he's counting on you. Hmm? Glory be to God. He's counting on who? On you. I need to abuse your clans, but let me what? I was looking for an opportunity, eh? which has uh, some, uh, I was just going to force it there, but it will just be forcing it there. Hallelujah. Matthew chapter 5, verse 14. Eh? It says, you are the lights of the world. A city that is set on a hill cannot be hidden. Eh? This sounds like that, the Molinde what? Vision. Eh? Okay. Verse 16 says, let your light so shine before men that they may see your good works and glorify your Father in heaven. Now, in addition to praying for the nation, for the peace of the nation, you know, for the leaders, for his kingdom to come, okay, in addition to that, you as an individual also should style up. Hallelujah. You know, you should be a light, you can't just be praying and then you're doing the very opposite of what you're praying for. There, you see, that's how God is like, but I don't hear any prayers from Uganda. But see, no, God, people are praying for the country. I mobilize them, Basava. God is saying nothing. Why? Because the guys who are praying for peace are the ones causing havoc. They're the ones telling other people to walk like a muteso. Eh? You understand? Eh, Tumblr, you know, eh? They're the ones who are just intrigued by people's noses. <laughs> you understand? Eh? Then they, and they're the ones praying for the nation. They're the ones who are there eh, on Facebook who are trying to, you know, forwarding nonsense, sharing things which cause divisions. And for them, they are, like, they are sharing information. Hmm? You understand? You can't be that. 
Now let your light so shine before men. Are you listening to me? You cannot be praying for the peace, the prosperity of the country. Okay? Yet, in your church, you know, when they start to rank, to look for people, the corrupt guys in your church, you know, you, you're on that list. In reality, there's no one. No one who's corrupt at their workplaces. You understand? Eh? So, be the light, eh? as you pray for the nation, to be the light to other nations. Eh? Okay? But as you pray also, you yourself, I, me, myself, eh? I should what? You know, I should be a light. Eh? I can't be praying now, Pastor Moses, I'm saying, is praying for the nation. Eh? You know, eh? for the nation. Why? Well, you know, he the guy is not even a good shepherd. You know, he sees this sheep being gonna, ooh, gonna be what? Killed and he's just there, what? Just thinking about his wife and kids. Selfish pastor. Hmm? You understand? Eh? Then he's praying for the president not to be selfish, to care for the people. No, fuck about to Babuli Joe. Eh? And Babuli Joe. I want to bow once. Yet you yourself, pastor, you know, you don't care for people. You don't tell them to save. Yet God has told you to tell them to save. Do you understand? Because yeah? you, you, you last went for a holiday in what? More than a year ago. But I don't know when God is saying me a holiday, you know. I did a great job those days. Then a man, that day, I, you remember, anyway, I wrote it in a book, eh? how that holiday came. Eh? The money, the what? then a dream that man take a break. I think God is right now is saying, I, I, I still need you. There's a great work to do in Uganda. So call it K. You know, eh? you're a very good shepherd. And they are what? Going to flood. Eh? And I won't tell you that the first bit. Hallelujah. Amen. I won't tell you because anyway, this, right now I'm living a life of great what? I'm an endangered species. <laughs> You're laughing, but it's true. You remember last year I had a dream, eh? You remember? That first I did 24 days. When 24 attacks were coming. And I knew God is saying now, say, if you don't, the way to neutralize these things, 24 days. I'm, you're here, you're laughing, you're thinking, more is what, in a blast, what? You're a man, and then you what? You remember that dream I had on Friday? Man, eh? you border borders, all of them, eh? there's no way you can escape. Because this person is highly connected, eh? influential, you can't escape. Hmm? Hallelujah. Yeah, but that holiday will come one day. I don't, yeah. Amen? Glory be to God. Amen? Yeah, so you can't be there trying to pray for what? Hmm? From seven to be, eh? to be mindful of. I want to bubble you, I want to balance it. Yet you're the pastor, you're not. You know, eh? You understand, eh? But I'm talking to all of us, in whatever you're involved in, eh? You understand, eh? Make sure that, th that your prayers are in sync with your behavior. You understand? Eh? Of course, we all fall and what? There's no one who's what? Who, who's perfect. But uh, let your heart eh, be, let the disposition of your heart eh, be towards the right side, eh, the good side. Okay? So Jesus says, you are the light of the world. And then he says, let your light shine before men that they may see your good works and glorify your Father who is in heaven. Are you listening to me? You can't be a pastor. You are praying for the economy, eh? people to stop stealing money, corruption. Hmm? Yet you as a pastor, you are, if they rank, you know, eh? hmm? just a love of money. Hmm? Raping people, eh? raping the children of God. And there you are, I hear what, praying for what? The corruption. Those, I don't think those prayers are hard, you know. Eh? I don't know. Maybe I need to go back and read my what? My grace 
uh, you know, the doctrine thing, uh, you know, it's been a long time. But have, uh, uh, the grace of God, no, 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 all your prayers are, you know, eh? <laughs> right, uh, yes, I need to go back and read them. Maybe God hears, yes, but he's like, ah, don't waste my time, you know, eh? Yeah, he hears, I guess. Okay? Amen? Simple stuff, eh? isn't it? Benevin to be very, very simple. Proverbs chapter 14, verse 30. Remember, I talk about let your light shine. Eh? Okay? That may, may. It says, righteousness exalts a nation, but sin is a reproach to any people. Hmm? Righteousness exalts a nation, but sin eh, is a reproach. That's why God is saying, let your light okay, shine before men. Hmm? Just imagine, you see it is so sad. Eh? Hey, the more you think about it, the more you get scared. Eh? Here is uh, like the body of Christ, eh, the church, eh, which is supposed to be the light. It is supposed to be the one praying. It is supposed to be the one interceding. Eh? The one showing the good works. You know, working in righteousness. Eh? You know, eh? where people are looking at them say, what, you understand? Eh? Okay? And then, man, you find, man, the church, it is just a name. But when the church is wildly, the mindset of the church is like the mindset of the world. Eh? You understand? Eh? Where the church, the world has come into the world and the church is in the world. Eh? Now, do you see how dangerous a nation like that can be? Because now God has no, there's no one he can call upon to say, man, pray eh? and avert this thing. Do you understand? Maybe as to man, I don't know whether there's a Ugandan in Rwanda, Sekati man, you guy, standing in the gap for your nation. Eh? He has to go out of the, you know, eh? You know, a church which is about the salt, eh? and the salt has lost its saltiness. Eh? You know, eh? and good see now, such salt here eh? in Matthew 5, he said it is good for with nothing but to be thrown out and to trample the upon. Okay, you remember the vine? Eh? You know, eh? he says that you're the vine. He, he, he said, I'm the vine, you're the branches. Then he said, if he, the branches don't bear fruit, they are, you know, they are cut off and thrown into the fire. Useless branches. You know, yeah? Okay, so we need, uh, you know, the church. Eh? I'm not talking about LAT, but the church in Uganda, the body of Christ. Eh? Okay? To be the real light. And that starts from the top, the leadership of the church. Okay? When I became a pastor, I also joined the leadership of the church in Uganda. Because I'm a pastor, you understand? <laughs> How many people? That doesn't matter. But God considers you, eh, me as a leader, one of the leaders. Your fake but fairly, you know, leaders. <laughs> Hallelujah. Now, I don't want to be, you understand? Now, so just imagine that. Eh, the, th the thing that, you know, is supposed to avert those things, eh, where it is also no more. It is just in name. Hey, man, that's a dangerous nation, eh? Yeah, that's where I think, man, yeah, someone has to have what? Two citizenships. <laughs> Two, man. Yeah. Huh? Like, Miguna, Miguna. Do you know that guy? Miguna, Miguna. You don't know Miguna, Miguna. Mula, Mula, visions, dreams, what? Temumani, current affairs. Miguna, Miguna, that's the... The guy, the lawyer who swore in Rilo Dinga, uh, and the guy was also a Canadian uh, citizenship. So when he was causing chaos in Kenya, they just uh, put him on, uh, on a plane to, to Canada. <laughs> Glory be to God. Hmm? Okay? Okay? That is essentially it. What God has for us, what today? Very simple things. I'm not going to complicate things eh? because I'm not here to impress anyone. Hmm? I'm already very impressed with myself. <laughs> In case you did not, very impressed. Eh? Very what? Impressed. Hallelujah. Huh? Last Sunday, I talked about some Ethiopian girl, some cute Ethiopian girl. 
you know, and people were disappointed that I'd stopped there. Okay, but the point is I'm already so impressed with myself that I don't need what? Any additions from you, amen? Hallelujah. But as a church, we want to what? We want to be serious, huh? all right? We want to be really um, a situation here, huh? give light huh? where our behavior, our conduct, you know, and also our prayers, huh? praying for the country, huh? Hmm? We don't want to be a church that loses its what? Saltiness. Eh? Okay? Where the light is no more. There's a lady here. Uh, yeah, that lady in pink. Yeah. Years ago, she told me that either her or someone, she used to be in a certain church years ago, eh? you know? Eh? And, uh, and then uh, either her or a friend of hers, someone, a member of the same church, I had a dream when there was this church a huge church, eh? and you see, these are the things which scare me. <laughs> Sizes of things don't mean anything to God. Don't mean nothing to God. Eh? So there was this church, a huge church, eh? you know, in Uganda. So this person, so this person dreams when someone, I think, either them or someone, any someone, like is thirsty, I guess on the streets, eh? thirsty. And so they need water. So they run to church for water. Eh? They get the taps water, you know, eh? dry, you know. Eh? Then you look for water. Then someone says, go to the, the pastor's what? Office, eh? what are your taps? Okay? The person gets there, you know, finds now <laughs> the offices are forex bureaus. Hmm? Body more cash. So that also means eh, that how much money church has eh, is irrelevant to God. Eh? If the church is not doing its work, irrelevant. So you are you are you are an is saying you're the one who collect the most money. God is saying that's irrelevant. There's no water. No water. My children are thirsty. You know, they are so thirsty, there's no water. And you haven't done a great work in them, so they are carnal. So they can't even discern that there's no water. You understand? Because they are carnal. Eh? They're just impressed. We're the largest. You know, eh? we collect the most money. But but carnal, they can't even know that man. Truly, a thirst. Pastors, but cash. Prosperity. Eh? Those things. Prosperity. That's why. Charlotte's dream, and for me, I, I kept thinking about it, and Charlotte's dream has yet been fulfilled. The couplers haven't yet come. Hmm? But remember that dream eh, was saying, eh, you know, they came, and then the presence departed. Katimuli hmm? Mukuvala sent a word. Well, now, what do we need? Uh, keep, uh, you know, just, uh, you know, eh? You can do anything, man, the Molina Saint. What you don't have, you there, the church members are a call away, Kwangabali, prosperous. You, you understand, man, the Molina Saint, be Molimu. Hmm? Just talking about, you know, hmm? so everything that is in our church. Hmm? You know? Do you know how many people, eh? Eh? Bank of Uganda, how many people in our church? It's like the entire Bank of Uganda is in our church. And then you say, you're the greatest church. Why? Well, can you imagine the greatest? Why? Because of the number of people, Bank of Uganda. And those are your parameters eh? for whatever in greatness. Parameters. Well, can you imagine? You don't even care whether those Bank of Uganda people are Muslims. <laughs> you understand? Eh? No, but they are Muslim. Never. You're the greatest. Such carnality. Eh? Hmm? And again, the Kano are impressed with kind of things, you know. Those things are very sad. So, man, I always think about that dream, and I, I hope no one ever gets that dream, man, about LAT. Or if they get it, let them come and share it quickly, quickly, <laughs> so that I can go on a hunger strike and get water. Eh? I'm telling you, eh, those dreams are good, by the way. They are good. However, if you're prideful, eh, if you're not a good pastor, you're prideful, 
If you believe a man, Pastor Moy, we dreamt when no tap, no water, then you go, fake dreams about what you understand. <laughs> but this person you're saying is a fake dream, eh? But they had 99 dreams, we are all saying they're right. Now, this one has messed you up. Someone has a track record, eh? You understand, eh? A track record. Now, the, the guys who know me from a from long time ago, or your pastor, eh? Moses, even before he became a pastor, a guy man his dreams, eh? To Mumani, eh? And that's one of the things I do eh? when I look at people's dreams, eh? You look at someone's track record. You understand, eh? And say, ah, catch you no Mumani, so, eh? This one, eh? eh? Hmm? Okay? So, yeah, it's Pastor Moses with a track record. Your Mumani, you know, we believe in uh, the dreams, Abigail, Eden, what, FP, or, you know, all those things, eh? Then it comes with one which just, mm, mm, no. You know, <laughs> instead of going to God and inquire, eh, she knows your car because it has messed up your, your I don't know your word. <laughs> Glory be to God. Okay? So we are the light of the world. We are the city built on the hill, eh? the church. Okay? So let us be the light as we pray for this country. Glory be to God. For the peace of this country, for the leaders of this country, hallelujah. Because nations of God, nations of calling, this source of, for the will of this country to be done. Hallelujah. Yeah. Just take a minute eh, and just begin to, eh, to talk to God about this, what? Matters. Eh? Hallelujah. Just talk about these things. Eh? Just talk to him. Eh? Yeah. First, thank him for the country that he has placed you in. Yeah. Thank him. Eh? Thank him. You're going to have great weather. Eh? Today it's very hot, eh? but generally you're going to have good weather. You're going to have good people. Eh? Amen. Good people. You know, most Ugandans are good. Eh? Ugandans are hospitable. Eh? You know, refugees in the country, though some people have inflated their numbers, but generally Ugandans are what? Hospitable people. Hallelujah. So pray for all the, you know, we thank him for those good things. Eh? Okay? Thank him, amen? Thank him, thank him, thank him. Hallelujah. Father, we thank you. Okay? We thank you, Father, for this nation. We are Ugandans. And Father, we pray for this nation. Okay? We pray for the nation. We pray for its peace. We pray that our country, we as Ugandans, will walk into our destiny. We shall walk according to your will. We shall, as a nation, we shall, we pray that you help us to fulfill what you have called us to fulfill as a nation. To be a blessing to the rest of the world. We pray for our leaders, Father. We pray for the president. We pray for the cabinet ministers. We pray for the members of parliament. We pray for the judiciary. Father, we pray that every one of these people will be influenced by your spirit to do good, to do good, to do good for fellow man, to establish laws and policies which are supposed to be a blessing to the Ugandans that are in this country. Father, we pray for them. Give them wisdom, Father, in the name of Jesus. Let them know your will, Father, in the name of Jesus. We pray for their advisors, the people around them. May these people be godly people who are able to speak the wisdom, the counsel of God into these leaders so that, Father, godliness abounds in this country. Father, we thank you. We thank you. Above all, Father, we pray. May your kingdom come in this nation. May your kingdom reign in the name of Jesus. Father, may your son reign as king in the affairs of our land. May he reign over our presidency, over our ministers, in our parliament. May Jesus be the overall. May he be the all in all. For we know when Jesus reigns, then there shall be peace. There shall be prosperity. Righteousness shall abound. Father, this we pray. 
believing Father that you help us and Lord we pray for ourselves for you have called us the light of the world we pray in the name of Jesus that our light shall so shine before men that men the unbelievers will see our good works and glorify you our Father who is in heaven so we pray that our prayers and our actions will be in sync Father we shall not pray one thing and act like something else. Father, we need your grace, your enablement to live a life that is pleasing unto you. Why? Because righteousness exalts a nation, but sin is a reproach to any people. Father, we thank you. We bless your name. And this kingdom will know no end. Last Adam Tabernacle, Christ for the Nations.